myself Santosh. I do have around nine years of experience working in IT industry. And currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft. My core experience is towards data science, data engineering and data analytics project. Currently I'm managing around eight projects and total I have worked with around 80 projects from different domains such as banking, healthcare, insurance, e-commerce and retail. And I'm a certified trainer taking training for KSR for the last five years. Welcome to KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll try to look at road to data engineering. How you can become a data engineer within three months. Now, if you put your efforts, dedication towards a subject, definitely you can become a data engineer within three months. So in this video, we'll look at what are the steps that you can follow to become a data engineer. As an agenda, I'll just give an overview of what exactly is a data engineer and then we'll see what are the skills that is required and also we'll see the demand that is going to happen in the next few years. Now, talking about data engineering, this is one of the a top skill currently in the market. Now, the problem with the data is we are not getting the quality data that is coming from the different data sources, whether it is coming from the uh, flat files, Excel files, CSV files, JSON files, or even if it is coming from the database, it is not up to the mark. So we need to clean the data and remember, and this is a foundation. If the data itself is not clean, then you can't even do the analysis. You can't even do the modeling. So one basic thing first is required is the data. The foundation is really important for any of the technology. Now, when you're talking about the data engineering now, since we are collecting the data from the different data sources, and then we need to transform it. When I say transform, according to the business, you need to do some calculated columns, do additional requirements, or maybe according to the business need, you'll be adding some um, business problems, statements. So these are the things which we need to focus on. And then finally, once you figure out everything, you'll be extracting into a database or you'll be loading into a system where that can be used for your analysis as well as the data science projects. Now, as in then, extracting it, transforming it, making sure that it is readily available for the system is what? Data engineering. Now, in order to become a data engineer, the first thing you should know is SQL. Why? You are going to communicate to a database and in order to communicate a database, the only one language is supportable is SQL, structured query language. Only by using SQL, you can talk to the databases. Now, is it something like always you are going to store the data in a SQL database? Not exactly. Some of the data may be unstructured, semi-structured, or you may be getting in the form of a JSON, or you'll be getting in the form of a key value pair. So those things, you have to store it in a NoSQL database. So having advantage, having a knowledge of NoSQL is also an advantage where you can explore unstructured data. Now, is it done? Is it done? If that is a question, it is done only for the databases. Now, if you want to communicate with the, any other tool, let's say, you want to communicate your database with your another system or if you want to connect to your cloud. In that case, your SQL may not be helpful. Your SQL is helpful only if you want to communicate within the database. If you want to communicate outside the database, then your SQL may not be helpful. In that case, you have to know one programming language which we have chosen is Python. Now, Python is a high-level language which we can provide a lot of solutions because we can start using the libraries, your libraries as some of the built-in functions and it makes our work easier. Now, yes, within the database, you already have a language that is SQL. Outside the database, if you want to bring outside the, your system and then you want to do some of the calculations, then I would say one programming knowledge is required that is Python. Since you're all working with the 
database as well as the tables knowing some data warehousing concepts is an advantage like trying to understand how the data has to be stored in a table what are the specific type of the table we need to create understanding some fact tables dimension tables what type of data i can store into a specific tables now that is the next one if you know the design how to design the database that will be an added advantage so that is what we are seeing as a data warehousing now why this data engineering become popular is it's all because there is huge number of data that is getting generated many systems are getting let's say for example internet usage smartphone usage and we have a lot of um, like census data so most of the data which we are getting is a terabyte of data right most of the users who are using internet are generating lot of data so it goes up to tera data peta data so how can we handle this right you need some system to handle this now that is where your big data comes into picture so as in the name implies it's a big data the data which is big so how to handle this for this we have big data was a problem and for that we have a solution as hadoop and spark now each one has a different use case by using hadoop and spark we can solve the problem now okay we have found a solution to handle big data but where do you handle it now that is where cloud is important now every business is now moving into the cloud now cloud is one of the optimized way where you can store the data with a limited pricing now that is where your clouding comes into picture well there are different cloud and the one which you choose whether you choose azure or which you choose aws or you choose gcp doesn't matter cloud is a cloud now one cloud services really necessary for understanding now that will be the end starting with communicating with the database then interconnecting with the different systems python designing the tables structure data warehousing handling big data that is big data technologies and finally where you handle it it's in the cloud which is a azure right now these are the skills that you need to know now taking one step forward let's see the road map initially as a beginner whether you are a fresher whether you are an experienced the way you need to start is start with the fundamentals by making sure that you are very strong at sql and python your sql and python plays a major role here because connecting with a database interacting with the database connecting with outside systems this too can handle everything right so start learning some basics go through the fundamentals start getting your hands dirty on the technologies so once you get a good hands on on sql and python start practicing it take different use cases there is lot of open source systems that is available in internet practice it like let's say hacker rank is there and you have a lot of other websites where you can go and practice it practice coding the more you practice coding the better you can implement in the real time now post that you need to understand this how this huge data is transformed you need to understand the core concepts right so everything deals with the memory locations as well as the storage so if you understand the core concepts of hadoop as well as spark it will be a greater advantage for you because end of the day every company is struggling to process the huge data and if you know the core concepts it becomes easier for you to implement it now once you get to know how to process a huge data next where do you do all this now that is where your cloud comes into picture there are 200 services you need not learn all 200 services whatever is a related service for azure that you can prepare for it for example for data storing we have a block storage or a data lake storage for moving the data from one place to other place maybe we have a etl which is called azure data factory for doing some transformations we have data bricks so knowing each and every service for that functionality will make your work better right and finally once you are good with this in it's all that you need to connect the dots take out a data set and start doing the transformations and just connect your end to end pipeline now just picking out the data from the different data sources using the proper azure services by using sql and python doing the transformations by understanding your core concepts of hadoop and python 
uh, adopt on pi spark making sure that it is clear on the path and you are about to create a pipeline once you create couple of pipelines then you'll be pretty confident of handling everything in your data engineering so the roadmap looks a bit harder but i would say worth the knowing the subject because every system is on pause now a lot of data analyst projects have come to halt a lot of data science projects have come to halt the reason we don't have a proper data and we have seen that uh, in lot of data analysts and data scientists budgets they are just putting the all the code into the data engineering saying that we don't have a proper quality of data and who is going to make this better it's we as a data engineers we need to work together in handling the huge data making sure that it is readily available for the system that's how you make it data engineering pipelines with that i'll end this video thank you so much for listening if you have any questions please reach out to our team we have a data engineering course where we promise you in making sure that we understand all the topics and get a hands on experience working with the pipeline please reach out to our team our team can help you thanks for watching please subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed